Hello everyone and welcome to Big South Fork National River and Recreation Area. I'm Ranger Jordan Hewitt and today I'm standing at the historic Oscar Blevins Farm in the Bandy Creek area of Big South Fork. I'm standing beside the 1870s log cabin that's here on the farm. It's where Oscar Blevins had been born. The stone chimney is here on the end of the cabin. Here beside the chimney we have a guitar and a banjo in a case. Then behind me we have a pasture a split rail fence, and several trees in fall colors. The people who lived in the Big South Fork, they tried to, they tried to use music to educate the next generation. They, they looked for ways uh, to impart wisdom uh, or tell stories or give advice to their children and their grandchildren and, and also try to understand the wildlife that was in this area. And so when they were trying to do this, they started going back uh, to the traditions that their forebears had known, that the, the songs and the music and the stories that their ancestors, their parents, their grandparents had brought with them uh, from England and Ireland and Scotland, across the ocean, across the mountains, and finally into the Big South Fork area. When the settlers arrived here, uh, they were looking for, for ways to understand the, 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 new, uh, the new area they were living in, uh, trying to understand the wildlife, that they experienced here and probably the most majestic and beautiful uh, animals that we have in the park is black bears. Now black bears have been in this area for millennia. Uh, Native Americans hunted them. They were part of several Native American legends and they lived, the bears lived uh, relatively peacefully uh, until the settlers came in. The settlers did hunt bears uh, it was part of the fur trade, and, 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 there, and people would hunt bears uh, for the meat, for the furs. But really, bears saw a big decline after 1900 when logging started in the area. Uh, when, when logging companies came in and started cutting all the trees, the bears lost their habitat. And by 1920, 1930, uh, there were no bears left in Big South Fork. They were gone. Uh, nobody saw any more bears. And honestly, there were people who lived their whole lives and had never seen a bear in this area. After Big South Fork started in the 1970s, uh, the park started looking for ways to um, introduce bears back into the park. And it wasn't until the 1990s that some bears were, were brought back into the park as an experiment, just to see how they would do. And the bear population actually did very well. And, and the bear population is doing well now. Uh, we've got uh, a little over 100 bears in the park today. And at one point in the 2000s, it was talked about trying to bring uh, some more bears and introduce them into the park. And we realized our bear population, our original bear population is doing its job. Uh, we've got enough bears now. We don't have to bring in any more. But even today, Bears and humans are still trying to understand how to coexist. So some safety measures that you can take when you come to the park, uh, and don't misunderstand bears. Uh, bears are, are more than happy to be left alone. Uh, black bears, uh, usually when you're in the park, you don't see them. Uh, usually if you do, you'll see them running away from you because they heard you when you're hiking on a trail uh, or they heard you uh, when you were working around in an area. But we do have to take some safety measures. So the first thing is uh, never approach a bear. If you ever see a bear in the park, if you're on a hiking trail, don't ever approach a bear. Smartest thing you can do is make yourself big. You want to make yourself look bigger than the bear and the bear will usually run away. Make noise. Uh, if you have to, pick up some rocks and throw. The bear will usually go on its way. Never get around a mother and a cub because that can be very dangerous for some obvious reasons. Another thing you'll need to know is you'll have to hang your food if you're staying in the backcountry. So you'll want to hang your backpack up. Uh, you'll want to tie it off, uh, off the ground, about 10, 20 feet off the ground, uh, away from a tree. Uh, so that way that a bear won't get into your pack to get food. If you're staying in a campground, uh, always store food in a bear storage box, which we have at all the campsites. Um, or store it in, in your RV or in your camper. Uh, don't leave food scraps out. Don't throw stuff uh, out in the woods. 
because bears, when they get a hold of human food, when bears get a hold of human food, um, they're, they're very easily tempted to want more. Bears can't help it. That's their biology. They don't know the difference between human food and natural food. And one thing I'll mention too is that trash is a problem also because if bears smell food trash, they'll oftentimes eat trash and sometimes they find bear droppings that has trash mixed in because they don't know the difference. It's not good for the physical health of the bear and human food is not good for the mental health of the bear because when a bear gets a hold of human food, then they want more and they want more and they want more. There's a saying that we don't like in the park service and it's that a fed bear, a bear that gets human food is a dead bear. So we want to keep that from happening. And the way that we can keep that from happening is if our visitors, our people that we have that come to the park and also our park staff, if we both work together to ensure that the bear never ever disappears from the big South Fork area again. One thing I'll mention is that if you ever do see a bear in the park, don't run because bears can run faster than you can and don't climb trees because bears can climb trees better than you can. Goes back to a song and I'm picking up a guitar now. The song is from the early 1900s. It was a pop song and uh, the people in the mountains heard it and they enjoyed it also and so they, they kept it alive even after it fell out of favor in the rest of the country. So if you ever encounter a bear, like I said, don't run and don't climb a tree because the bear uh, can climb trees better than you can. And the gentleman in this story, in the song, The Preacher and the Bear, he learned that also. This is uh, the old pop song, Preacher and the Bear. A preacher went out hunting, it was on a Sunday morning. Of course, it was against his religion, but he took his gun and gone. He shot himself some very fine quail in one little skinny hair. And on his way returning home, he met a great big grizzly bear. Well, the bear marched out in the middle of the road, walked to the man you see. The preacher got so excited, he climbed up in a tree. The bear sat down upon the ground, and the man climbed out on a limb. He cast his eyes to the Lord in the skies, these words he said to him. Oh, Lord, did you deliver Daniel from the lion's den? Also deliver Jonah from the belly of the whale again. Three Hebrew children from the fiery furnace of the good book does declare. So, Lord, if you can't help me, for goodness sakes, don't help that bear. Man stayed up in that tree, I guess it was all night. Said, Lord, if you help that bear, you'll see an awful fight. About that time, the limb let go and the man went a tumbling down. You should have heard him scream and shout before he hit the ground. He hit the ground, swinging right and left, was a terrible sight. Bear hugged the preacher and squeezed with all his might. Preacher lost his religion, and the bear held on to him. And he cast his eyes to the Lord in the skies, and these words he said to him. Oh, Lord, did you deliver Daniel from the lion's den? Also deliver Jonah from the belly of the whale again. Three Hebrew children from the fiery furnace, so the good book does declare. So, Lord, if you can't help me, for goodness sakes, don't help that bear. Thank you for coming along with me to learn about the uh, the nature uh, the nature history of the park and also some of the musical history of the park. Thank you, and we'll see you soon.